so I want to uh, to discuss with you the GDPR. This is a new legislation of European Union. So how our solutions of our company might help you or your customers to uh, be compliant with this new regulation. But uh, just to make sure that you know what Microfocus is. So this is a new compliant company which is uh, uh, which is a result which is a result of combining two companies. So British company which calls with the same name Microfocus. And the uh, company which you I believe you know, Hewlett Packard. So Hewlett Packard uh, isolated its uh, software business and they combined it with uh, British company Microfocus. So the, all uh, this uh, software from both these companies are now represented by a new combined company which also called Microfocus. Uh, so as you can see, now we are seventh uh, largest Q software player in the world. Among all players who, are, uh, who do uh, software, uh, software development. Of course, we are still smaller than Microsoft and, and Oracle and SAP, but we are quite huge and we have a presence in all countries. And uh, our portfolio is also very, very broad, so you can find many different areas to, to cover your needs. We have some solutions for developers to make this development process easier and faster. We have uh, IT operations solutions to monitor your infrastructure. And also we have some solutions for cloud to make a private cloud. But the main uh, interest for today's conference are uh, our next uh, areas. So security, we have many solutions for security. And um, the most known, I believe the most known is ArcSight. So now it's a microfocus arc site. And uh, this is a uh, security information and uh, event management system, right? So uh, it's quite known. We have many customers in Serbia. We have customers in Europe and uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the whole world. Also, we have a Fortify. This is uh, for testing applications, which are being developed by your development team. So to test it uh, on, on any security threats. Does it have any backdoors? Does it have any you know, weak points which can be used by hackers in future? So this is, this is a uh, tool to help developers to test their applications. And also we have a voltage. It's for encryption and minimization of data. <laughs> and some other uh, solutions like identity-based access and so on. Uh, uh, we will have one more slot today. Uh, our partner here in Serbia will uh, describe uh, uh, his experience about Arcsight. Uh, my main area is next uh, block of our solutions. It's, uh, it's called information management and governance. So it's about managing information lifecycle, as I said, and it's I will touch uh, my solutions a bit later, how it's related to this legislation. Uh, we have many different uh, uh, components here, even backup, data protector, maybe you know this. So even backup is, is quite important for security because this is the last, I would say, the last line of defense. If, you, well, if your uh, perimeter is not secured or was breached, at least you can recover your data. Right? So, latest attacks shows us that sh showed us that uh, uh, that to have a, a copy of your data is very important. So what GDPR is? Uh, GDPR this is well it stands for General Data Protection Regulation, and it's a new uh, European Union legislation about protecting personal data. So yeah, why why it was introduced. It's just because uh, information and uh, data, I would say it's a uh, oil of future, right? So all biggest company now, they don't uh, extract any uh, oil. <laughs> it's just, they, they're just dealing with data, right? So they extract data and they sell data and they use data in different ways. So 
that's why it's uh, it's so important to have a legislation which protects, I would say, environment. You know, we're dealing uh, with this day. So that's why European Union passed a um, uh, legislation that was done two years ago, so to give companies time to be prepared. And uh, it was effective, it was just put in law, put in, uh, put in use just a few days ago. So now it's, a, it's active uh, regulation. So companies could be punished uh, against these uh, requirements. So, yeah, Serbia, maybe, maybe Serbia is not a part of the European Union yet, but um, uh, this GDPR uh, legislation could be used even with companies worldwide, not not only for European Union companies, which is of course the, the target audience for this uh, legislation, but also any other companies could be punished, I would say, could be controlled by this uh, legislation. Especially if you have customers who are European Union cust uh, citizens, if you have employees who has uh, European Union citizenship, or you have, uh, I don't know, French, for example, in Europe, or maybe it's an international company who has a uh, French in Serbia. So there are many cases where this legislation could be applicable to Serbian companies, to companies operating in Serbia. Uh, that's why it's it's better to be prepared, at least to, to know this legislation, to, to check it with your legal team, with your compliance teams. Um, do you have any risk uh, because of this legislation? There are many requirements of this legislation, including well, including even backup. So you, you need to do backup. You need to have a DPO, data protection officer, in your uh, company. You need to protect your perimeter with uh, different tools, including encryption, uh, uh, sorry, not including, and also you need to use uh, encryption or pseudonymization of your data. Uh, but also there are many new things introduced for particular customers. So they will have, they, they have already uh, new rights. For example, right to be forgotten. For example, if your customer wants to be forgotten, he may just request it from, uh, from, from your company. And you should, uh, you should erase all, all data you have about this particular person. Right? So this is one of the most difficult rights to be fulfilled because you need you understand that data about a particular person could reside in many many different uh, applications, databases, files, and so on. So quite difficult to find a particular person's data. Right? Another thing is that we have uh, local legislation which prevents us from deleting all information. It means we just need to stop using this data but still keep it in, in our systems to any, uh, for any legal reasons, right? So, I don't know, anti-terrorism uh, legislation or any other stuff is more important than GDPR, right? So we need to, uh, to check, um, um, for example, retention policy. Can you delete these files? Can you delete this information or not? Right? So it's a quite uh, difficult task. But still, you need to be compliant, right? right? Another thing is that you need to notify all uh, individuals about any breaches. So for example, in 72 hours, you should notify any uh, any individuals who was uh, whose data was stolen. Right? You need to do it as fast as possible. Uh, the main difference uh, between GDPR and previous directive data protection directive is that GDPR is a legislation so it means you you are forced to be compliant and uh, if you are not compliant you will be fined and punished right so they have a uh, big fines and it's up up to four percent of global turnover or 20 million euros which is bigger so it means uh, uh, even if you have a small branch in uh, Europe or your bank has a small, small branch in you, and uh, you are in a lawsuit in for this Euro, for European Union branch, you may be punished for the global turnover of the whole group. Right? So, 
this is quite quite yeah. so dangerous and painful. But uh, fines not the only uh, risk. Thing. They're, they're not the only risk, but also I believe you understand that the fact uh, losing your data, or the, the, the fact of data breach, uh, could uh, influence on your market share, on your uh, on your customer base, and so on. So it's just you know market will sanction you. <coughs> Just a few examples. It's the uh, biggest data breaches in the last some in the last ten years. And uh, yeah, you can see that uh, almost <coughs> all, uh, quite big company, biggest biggest company in, uh, in this area will will hurt somehow. And just a few examples. This is the most recent TQ pass. Ukrafax is the one one of the biggest uh, world credit history uh, company. So it's it collects uh, many data about people, and they prepare credit score credit scores for banks, financial institutes. So they have a lot of information about well, even people people salary, financial uh, details, uh, social security numbers, ID personal contact information, right? So all types of information they have. And uh, it was a data breach and data about 147 million people was told. Right? So, uh, yeah, as you can see, the, the whole top management team was fired after that. And they, they, had more, uh, they have around uh, half a billion fines. And now they're in the process of uh, individual lawsuits with each particular individuals maybe not the not whole 147 but still we have many 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 individual lawsuits so the damage is huge Yahoo this is another example I believe you know this uh, they the fact some years ago but the fact that they, they were fact uh, was Announced only recently during the, the uh, negotiation with Verizon. Right? So, so this fact that they were hard and data was stolen, uh, the result of it was that uh, the sale price of Yahoo was dropped by 350 million dollars. Right? So you can see that market can sanction even even worse than just fines from regulators. Uh, what solutions do we have to help your customers or you to be compliant with GDPR? First of all, as I said, it's uh, our security stack and we will touch it uh, in this conference also. Uh, so you need to defend your parameter, parameter you need to anonymize or pseudonymize pseudonymizes your data, uh, but also you need to check uh, in what systems and what sources uh, uh, you have information about particular individuals. So basic steps are, first of all, identify sources. What, application, uh, what applications have your customer's personal data? What databases? Where file shares? Where you can find some personal data. So it's, it could be a both structured and unstructured data, right? Structured, this is databases, unstructured, this is files, SharePoints, emails, and so on. After that, you should be able to identify all this information to find it, right? And to classify it. Is it personal data? Is it any other kind of sensitive data? Is it the data which could be, I don't know, deleted even because you don't need to store it anymore? Which data could be, should be, which data should be uh, managed as a, an individual record? So, for example, the data about this particular person, you need to know um, what data you have about this person because you need to be compliant with right to be forgotten, right? So, you need to understand where data of this particular individual are located. <coughs> 
And then you should apply some policies, whether to delete information, to put it in a security uh, silo, or I don't know, to, to declare it in a content management system. So for this, we have a suite, which we call Secure Content Management suite. And uh, basically, it consists of three uh, parts. First two parts are to index, to connect to different repositories you have in your company, including databases, including file shares, emails, and, well, almost all repositories. We can connect to it. We can uh, index it, so we can we will be able to find all personal data, all sensitive data in all your repositories. And after that, you may apply policies on this. So delete or manage it somehow in a more secure way. Uh, and also, we have a content manager, which is ECM solution, Enterprise Content Management solution. Right? So it helps you to manage information for, from, uh, well, for the whole I would say for the whole life cycle. So you can capture it, you can manage it as an individual record. For example, for this particular person, uh, data of this particular person could be accessed only by these uh, users. For uh, this particular part of information, there is another access level. This particular part of information should be stored for five years, not less, not more. Right? So all that stuff could be managed by third component of our solution, which called content manager. Yeah, different uh, words we have and uh, ratings. So just a few more words about these three components, right? So control point, we, we call it control point. This is a solution for indexing unstructured data. Uh, Gartner uh, has has introduced the, the new term. They, they, they called it dark data. So dark data is a data where uh, is a data where you don't understand the, the meaning of this data, the, the level of importance of this, data, of this data. So you don't understand. Do you need to store this data? Is it sensitive? Is it well? Do you need to store it at all? Right. So they. Um, uh, I have uh, results of research which was done by a uh, research, research agency for about 500 European companies. And the interesting fact that uh, almost half of the data of these companies are so-called dark data. D dark data. So it's, they don't even understand, do they need to store it? What is uh, beneath this you know, dark? Is it important data or not? And also some of data which we are indexed and they, they, they do understand what it is. They, they can say that almost half of it is so-called ROT data, redundant, absolute or driving. So you don't necessarily need to store this data. So you can, you can read this data. So our purpose here is just to put a kind of light on this dark data to uh, uh, classify data, to understand is it if it's important or not, and maybe to delete some information, or maybe to put it in a more secure way to manage. So it's exactly how our control point works. So first of all, you have many pieces of information, you don't even know what it is. So first step is just to get metadata, like, I don't know, extension, uh, size, the date of last access, and so on. So you will be able to get a picture of this. And after that, uh, you will be able to uh, index not only metadata, but also content. So you can find personal data, for example, security uh, numbers, or tax identifier numbers, right, or credit card numbers in, uh, in all repositories you have in your company. So you will be able to classify this information is sensitive, this information is PII, right, personal data, this information could be deleted because you don't need to store it. And after that, you will be able to apply policies. It could be done manually with people intervention, intervention or it could be done in a quite automatic way. So, also we have uh, machine learning capabilities. So, for example, you may train uh, a, a 
category. For example, you have 10 agreements, right? and you can, uh, you can say that these particular 10 files are agreements. System will index it, will train category, for example, agreements, and if it finds in future, if it, fi if, if it finds uh, uh, another document, which is quite similar to this category, which is quite similar to these 10 documents, it may say that, well, with a probability of 90%, this document is also uh, fits to category agreements. Right? So you will be able to find um, not only identical documents, but quite, but quite similar documents to, to whatever you want to find. And also we have a so-called cluster map. You can you can see it on the screen. So each point uh, on this map is a topic. So for example, you may just index the whole file shell. You don't know what information is sitting there, but you can get uh, kind of a helicopter picture. So what main topics of my information in this file shell or in this repository? Is it about this project or is it about uh, some unnecessary things which you can delete? So you don't even know what to find, but you will be proposed with a cluster map. What main topics are in these repositories? Another solution is the structured data manager. This is for databases, right? So we can, again, we can connect to every database you have. We can index it and find personal data in it. And we can find that uh, for this particular person, we have uh, information. His surname is this is in this table. His phone phone number is this table, is in this table. So you can kind of you may have a data registry of all information of individuals. And after that, you can apply any policies like, like uh, delete information, anonymize it, or encrypt it, or maybe just copy it and put it in a content management system. Uh, together with our solution from security stack with voltage secure data, we can do a format preserved encryption. So, for example, if you have a surname or if you have any kind of credit number, for example, and uh, two, two or some digits are just control, control check of all other digits, so you cannot just, you know, replace one digit with another. You need to understand that two digits should be a sum of all others, right? So it's called format preserving encryption. We can do it also. So for example, if a particular individual asks you to delete some information and you cannot delete this information, you can just you may just encrypt uh, this information and keep uh, the <coughs> keep uh, keys in a more secure way, right? Until you are able to delete it. There are four use cases which can be done with the same solution. One is GDPR-oriented, this is defensible treatment, so to find personal data. Another thing is for test data management. So if you have development team and you need to test your software, usually you need to ingest some data in it, right, in, in your development uh, environment. But data should be encrypted, it should be anonymized, because you usually it's not a good idea to use a production data in your development, development uh, environment. So we can, we can manage this process. We can prepare a set of data, subset of data, anonymize it and put it in a, in a development environment. Right? So you will be, it will be done easy to prepare a roadmap. So we will suggest you particular actions which you need to do to be compliant with GDPR. So this uh, approach, we call it GTV or Journey to Value. It's a workshop for half a day or even or maybe one day. And usually we ask to be main stakeholders in one room. And uh, we discuss all these questions together with uh, main st stakeholders. So that's it. Thank you very much. I have a 